Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that he will send to every one of us messages in various forms, reminders. Some were fortunate to live in the midst of the messengers themselves. But for those who have come later on, there are people who have spent their lives or a great portion of their lives studying what the messengers have brought. And they have attained that knowledge and they disseminate that knowledge. It is important that whenever we hear the message of goodness, whenever we hear the message that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order for us to achieve success, we should be following that message. We should be doing something about it. The minimum is in our hearts, we should be feeling the inclination towards the message of goodness. And if this is the case, then insha'Allah, we are heading in the right direction. Listen to the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 35, addressing the children of Adam, promising them that he will send messengers to them. And when they come, how should the children of Adam react to these messengers? Ya bani Adam, imma yatiyannakum rusulum minkum yaqussun alaykum ayati. فَمَنِ اتَّقَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ O children of Adam, messengers will come to you or when the messengers do come to you, reciting to you our verses and relating to you our message, then two qualities are required from you. Those who are conscious of Allah, which means they have within them the piety, we would term it taqwa in the Arabic language, and they rectify themselves. For them, there is no reason to fear. They will be the ones who are successful. فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ No need for them to fear, nor will they have reason to be sad. Because when the message came to them, via the messengers or the messengers of the messengers, who are the ulama. When these messages came, then they reacted by becoming conscious of Allah and by rectifying and correcting where they were going wrong. And this is what would result in them becoming, may Allah make us from amongst them, becoming people who have no reason to worry, nor any reason to fear. May Allah grant us peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Now, if we take a look at the reasons why the people of hellfire will be in hellfire, we come across many verses and many explanations of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, if you look at the ahadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also warned us and he has also told us. In fact, in one narration he was asked, what are the main reasons that would result in the people who have been granted entry, or should I say penalized by entry into paradise, what would be the main reasons for them having reached there? What is the reason for their destruction or failure? And in one narration he says, Al-famu wal farju. Do you know what that means? The mouth and the private parts. May Allah protect us. The abuse or the wrong use of the mouth. Let's be very careful what we say how we talk, what we put into the mouth in terms of food should be halal, the sustenance we earn must be pure, and inshallah what comes out of the mouth also should be blessed. Remember, keep your tongue moist in the remembrance of Allah. If it is not moist in the remembrance of Allah, it will become moist in the remembrance of the devil or in something futile or unnecessary. May Allah protect us. So in this verse, beautiful verse number 50, there is a description of the statements that will be made between the people of heaven and the people of hell. وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ أَوْ مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَهُمَا عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ the people of hellfire will call out to the people of heaven saying, 
please pour on us a little bit of water or any goodness that Allah has given you, pour it on us. We are suffering in this flame. We are being burnt in this heat. Please pour on us in order to extinguish or to alleviate our suffering. May Allah protect us all. The response will come from the people of heaven saying, Allah has made it haram today for those who disbelieved. It's prohibited for us to assist you in that particular way. May Allah grant us protection from hellfire. Now, we all want protection. We want to be at peace. We want to be people who will enter paradise. So what is it that has driven the people of hell to hell? Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the very next verse, describing the qualities of those people of hellfire. He says, الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا دِينَهُمْ وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا Those who took their religion as a play and an amusement and the world deceived them. Materialism overtook them. Those are the ones who will be burning in hellfire. Those who do not take their deen seriously. Those who take it as an amusement and a joke and they don't realize their attachment to this world should never ever be more than their attachment to their maker. Remember you love things in the dunya. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should always exceed the love of any other thing and everything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the love of himself and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may he make us from those who really can take heed. So then Allah says, and this is something that would make us cry. فَالْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاهُمْ كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا Allah says, those people, and we described them a few moments ago, we will ignore them like they ignored our meeting of this day. They, they knew about it, but they chose to ignore it. So we know about them, but we will also choose to ignore them. May Allah protect us. You want to ignore Allah. You want to ignore His rules and regulations. You want to ignore the prohibitions. And you, you do not want to abstain from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked you to abstain from. May Allah not do it to us. There may come a day when Allah may say, You chose to ignore me and my instruction. Today I am ignoring you and I am not worried what happens to you. May Allah protect us. So brothers and sisters, we want peace. We are searching for it. Let's try our best. Let's turn to Allah. Let's engage in lots of repentance. And let's try and become better people as the days pass. Even if we are inching closer to Allah for as long as it is done on a regular basis, properly and thoroughly, without going backwards on our achievements, by the will of Allah, we are heading in the right direction. And this is why when the heart is inclining towards the message of Allah, be happy, thank Allah, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to beautify iman in your heart. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma habib ilayna al-eemana wa zayyinhu fi qulubina, wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wal fusuqa wal isyan, wa ja'alna min al-rashideen. Oh Allah, this is a dua of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make loved to us iman, belief. And beautify it in our hearts. Allahu Akbar. And make detested to us disbelief and sin and any, anything that will earn your displeasure, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and make us from the righteous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. Then we are learning something else. Sometimes punishment comes wholesale. Wholesale meaning... You have a huge tsunami. May Allah protect us all. You know, a tsunami and these disasters that we, we see, they are not always punishment for every category of person. Sometimes the same disaster can be a means of entry into paradise for some who died whilst in the condition of sajda, whilst in prostration, whilst in the masjid, whilst obeying Allah, whilst being a good person. For them, it might have been a flood, it might have been a hurricane, it might have been a tornado or a tsunami, whatever it was, but it resulted in them being martyred or granted paradise. And the same disaster can result in some who may be in the clubs, clubbing and dancing and jiving and so on. For them, it may be a means of punishment. May Allah protect us. So this is why, let's watch our own conditions. Not every time is something that appears to be a huge disaster, a punishment. And sometimes it's a punishment for some and not a punishment for others. This is why when we've suffered a great loss, look at the condition of your heart. 
if it is at peace and it is calm, then inshallah, that issue that happened to you is a means of elevation of your status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Become happy with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes it is very beneficial for us to do certain deeds that will result in protecting us in particular from the great torment and punishment when it comes. Let's name one of these deeds mentioned in the Quran. To stop people from doing evil or to discourage people from bad or to keep reminding people about what is wrong. Those who continue engaging in what is known as nahi anil munkar, which means discouraging people from bad and talking to people in a way that they leave and abandon that which is evil and bad. If we continue reminding people about what will cause the displeasure of Allah, the day the punishment comes, we will be saved miraculously. I'm sure we have all witnessed images of some of the huge disasters and suddenly one house is remaining. How is the house remaining? That's the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find a place of worship intact and everything around it is destroyed. This is the qudra, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows why he has done it. He has granted that peace to some people or to a specific place because of the closeness to him or for any other reason that he so wishes. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in verse number 165 of Surah Al-A'raf where he speaks about those who forgot the message. When the people forgot our message and they turned away from it, we did two things. Firstly, we saved those who used to discourage them from engaging in evil. And secondly, we then punished those or the rest. We punished those who deserve the punishment. So, one of the ways of being saved from Allah's punishment is to remind people, my brother, don't do this. My sister, don't dress in this way. My brother, don't listen to this. My brother, do this and do that. Don't miss your salah. Fast in the month of Ramadan and so on and so forth. If we keep on reminding people by the will of Allah, the day the punishment comes, we will be from amongst those who are saved. May Allah protect us. Then comes the status of the Quran, the word of Allah. The word of Allah. Imagine if a leader of a nation or a CEO of the company that you are working for happens to be talking and you are busy chatting on the side and so on. What will happen? May Allah protect us. I think it would be the greatest disrespect. So it is even greater disrespect to be engaging in futile speech or any form of unnecessary speech whilst the words of Allah are being recited. And this is clear from the Quran, verse number 204. Allah says, if you want peace, if you want rahma, rahma means mercy. You want the mercy of Allah? Whenever the words of Allah are being recited, respect them. By remaining silent and trying to listen carefully what is being said. Try and understand it. Try and listen very carefully. Attentive ear. And your heart should be there. Your mind should be there. Allah says, if that's what you do, you deserve the mercy of Allah. And naturally, if you have the mercy of Allah, you will be in the highest level of peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it to us. Verse number 204, Surah Al-A'raf. When the Quran is being recited, listen very attentively to it and remain very silent. Do not make any noise whatsoever in order that you may achieve mercy. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us mercy. The next surah, Surah Al-Anfal, we started its recitation this evening. Beautiful verses right in the opening of this particular surah where Allah describes the believers and some of the qualities of the believers. Do you want to know if you're a true believer? One narration of Muhammad wasallam says, when your good deed makes you happy, makes you happy, and your bad deed makes you regret and makes you sad, it is a sign that you are a believer. Amazing. You do something bad, you commit a sin, and you regret about it. You don't feel nice at all. You want to turn to Allah, you end up turning to Allah. That's a sign that you're a believer. And when you've done a good deed, you got up for tahajjud, mashallah, you dressed appropriately for the sake of Allah, you wanted to commit a sin, but you quit it because of Allah, and you feel nice about it. Ya Allah, you saved me. There is a powerful dua that used to be made by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we are taught the same dua. Allahumma kfini bi halalika an haramik, wa ghnini bi fadlika amman siwak. Oh Allah. Oh Allah, 
grant me sufficiency in that which is halal so that I don't fall into that which is haram. What a powerful dua. So, Ya Allah, grant me happiness, contentment and sufficiency in that which is halal so that I do not fall in haram. And Ya Allah, grant me independence, grant me independence through your virtue in a way that I do not depend on anyone else. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Today, sometimes people depend on other people. And today, sometimes people are not satisfied with halal. So they end up doing haram and they say, well, you know what? I wasn't satisfied. That is not an excuse. Make a dua. Make a dua that, oh Allah, keep me happy with what is halal. Let it be enough for me. Subhanallah. Listen to the qualities of the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number two of Surah Al-Anfal, as well as the next two verses, Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ The true believers are those whom when Allah is mentioned, their hearts tremble. When Allah is mentioned, their hearts tremble. And when the verses of Allah are recited, their iman is solidified, it's strengthened. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our iman. And they are the ones who lay their trust in Allah. Whatever happens, I've tried my best, I've fulfilled my role, saying Bismillah, the rest of it is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true iman. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, other qualities of the true believers. Those who establish their prayer and they continue spending from that which we have provided them. Do we have these qualities? If we do, Allah says, Those are the true believers. لَهُمْ دَرَجَاتٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ They have a high status with their Rabb. وَمَغْفِرَةٌ And they will have lots of forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ And they will have a very generous, generous sustenance in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. May Allah grant us paradise. May He bless us with some of these qualities. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't be like those whose peace is snatched away because they claim to be believers, but they do not believe. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, ati'u allaha wa rasoolahu wa la tawallahu anhu wa antum tasma'oon wa la takoonu kalladheena qalu sami'na wa hum la yasma'oon. Amazing verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 20 and 21 of Surah Al-Anfal, O you who believe, obey Allah and His Messenger, and do not turn away. Whilst you are hearing, you are hearing the message and you are turning away. You know what's right and wrong, but you couldn't be bothered. Don't do that, Allah says. Obviously, the negative effect of it will affect the one who wants to do that. So we should abstain from behaving in a way that we are saying we are following Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but... We are not bothered when the statements are uttered to us. May Allah protect us. Then Allah says, do not be like those who say, no, we hear. But in actual fact, they do not follow. They don't hear. They are not hearing. You know, if someone says, for example, if someone asks you, what is the time? And you tell them, the time is 9.15. And then they look at you like you haven't answered them. So they asked you a question and they were pretending to hear, but in actual fact they didn't hear. And sometimes they may have heard, but the way they are looking at you, as though you did not deliver the message. But you said things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this type of behavior. We have asked for guidance. Every day we say, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim Guide us to the straight path. So many times a day in salah, we utter these words. We repeat them from Surah Al-Fatiha. So Allah says, well, we have sent you the guidance. Well, why then do we say, okay, we asked you for guidance. Now the guidance has come. But you know what? We really couldn't be bothered. We, we don't even admit that you are telling us how to live our lives in a way that you will achieve peace in this world and in the next. May Allah protect us and may He grant us goodness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us not to cheat. Not to cheat and deceive Allah and His Messenger by breaking your promises and by 
breaching your contracts that you have actually gone forth to strengthen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Whenever we have engaged in some form of a contract, we need to fulfill it. Whenever we have been entrusted with something, we need to fulfill the trust. Marriage is also a great trust. Remember, you need to fulfill the trust in every single way. Not only that, your promise to Allah. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la takhoonu Allah wa rasoola wa takhoonu amanatikum wa antum ta'lamoon. O you who believe, O you who believe, do not deceive or cheat or breach your contract with Allah and His Messenger by breaching your contracts with one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. One of the reasons is, when you say you're a Muslim, you are an ambassador of the deen. By you now engaging in clandestine behavior, you are giving a bad name to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People look at you. What's your name, brother? You say Muhammad or Abdullah. And then you are a cheat. You rob people of money. You deceive. You, you, you engage in clandestine behavior. What do you think is going to happen to the reputation of Islam? It's because of us and our actions sometimes that people look at Islam and say, this religion is not good. May Allah protect us. The religion is perfect, but it's us who need a lot of help. And we need to rectify our ways and habits so that people's wrong perceptions of Islam can be rectified. May Allah grant us goodness. This is why Allah says, وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةً You need to remember and you need to bear in mind that your wealth and your children are a test from Allah. They can take, Allah can take them away whenever He wants, however He wants. Your wealth and your children are not yours. They are actually Allah's. He has only entrusted you with them for a short period of time and He can take it away during your lifetime or He may not even give you if He wishes and He can take it away after you go. Or he can take a little bit away in portions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So Allah says, do not get too attached to that which belongs to us. In a way that when we take it away, you begin to question our own decree. When we start questioning the decree of Allah, we lose happiness. We lose contentment. A person loses his business. He's lost a child or two. May Allah protect us and grant us all Jannah. In that case, if he is to say, Ya Allah, why did you do this? And he gets angry with Allah. What happens? His iman begins to diminish. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. We will suffer loss in this world. Allah says that. We will suffer loss in both our sustenance as well as our children and offspring. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and strength. This is why Allah says, and this is verse number 29 of the same surah, Surah Al-Anfal. In life, with us. We like to make decisions and we all hope and pray that our decisions are the correct decisions. You know you have a business decision, decision of marriage, where to send your children to for school, what to do, where to go, you know, so many decisions in life. We would love to make the correct decisions. So Allah tells us the answer in the Quran. If you want the ability to distinguish between right and wrong, you only need one thing. What is that? Taqwa. That's all. You need the consciousness of Allah. If you have the consciousness of Allah, He will grant you the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. It's amazing. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in tattaqullaha yaj'al lakum furqana wa yukaffir ankum sayyatikum wa yaghfir lakum. Allah says, O you who believe, if you are going to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will grant you the ability to distinguish between right and wrong, between left and right, between darkness and light. He will grant you that ability to distinguish and on top of that, He will forgive your sins for indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving, most merciful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us, warns us of something that we do need a warning about today in the world. Today what happens to the Muslims? Every small thing we are divided. Small thing, we cannot work together. We are divided. If a person, for example, is tall, he doesn't get along with those who are short. I mean, that's a bit ridiculous, but it can happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really has warned us 
about dispute amongst you as an ummah. If you are to dispute and argue, what will happen? You lose your power and your might as an ummah. Today we have two billion Muslims on the globe. We cannot agree to swat a fly. I'm honest with you. We have two billion Muslims on the globe. We cannot agree to swat a fly. Why? Because everyone is a big sheikh on his own. And everyone wants to have a big say. And the sheikhs are fighting each other. Each one calling the other a kafir. Wallahi, it's a reality. So what is happening? Our leaders are debating and arguing and fighting and calling each other names. The public are even more confused because any message of goodness, they are kept away. Hey, don't go here. Don't go there. What is the story? What happens? Allah says, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Verse number 46 of Surah Al-Anfal. Follow Allah and follow His Rasul and do not dispute with one another because it will result in your total failure and the, and the going away or snatching away of your might as an ummah. Gone. Totally gone. Why? Because small disputes. Today, brothers and sisters don't speak to each other. What a shame. Uncles and aunts don't speak to each other. Trustees from one masjid do not get along with trustees from another masjid. Why? It's an issue of prestige. Allah, what are you talking about? We are an ummah. We share the shahada. That's enough. Put aside your differences and come together. We need the might as an ummah. We have the numbers. We have everything. But the problem is we are disputing. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in another verse in the Quran. Do you know what he says? وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ The kuffar, they are supporters and protectors of one another. Come what may, they put aside their differences when it comes to sticking up for one another. This is in the Quran. We read the verse tonight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us. This in fact is verse number 73 of the same surah, Surah Al-Anfal. Do you know what Allah says after he tells us that the kuffar stick up for one another and they protect one another? He says, إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ if you are not going to do the same, then there will be great fitna and fasad on earth. That means, if you are not going to stick up for one another and protect one another, then there will be chaos and corruption on the whole globe. Hence, we find the chaos and corruption on the globe today. It is a decree of Allah. We are totally disunited. We cannot see face to face. Yet, we are born through one mother and father. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the ummah. May Allah protect us. It is worth crying for, my brothers and sisters. We are calling for unity. It is not going to come without tolerating one another. We need to understand not everybody is going to think the same. Not everybody is going to have the same inclinations. But don't we share the shahada? Isn't that stronger than the bond of blood, my brothers and sisters? Gone are the days when the kuffar are excited because they can trample over us by the mere disunity that we are engaged in, my brothers and sisters. We need it. We need it desperately. Our brothers are suffering across the globe, all over. The reason is we are swearing one another. We are calling one another names. We do not want to look at one another. Whereas we all utter the shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. My brothers and sisters, it is a passionate call. We want peace. We are searching for peace. We are the people of peace. Why then are we looked at as warmongers who are killing one another across the globe just because we have a little difference? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this ummah and may he grant us unity. May he open our doors until we meet again. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.